Greetings and welcome to a new video about analog electronics. We continue with a different circuit. In this case, we will discuss a multiple op-amp circuit. So we have more than one. And we will also see how we can describe the current and also the voltage for this specific circuit. This will be our first example. We will see more complicated examples in the second and also the other examples that will follow this example. Of course, we'll look at the calculation step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our problem. We have this following circuit given with two volt sources, VA and VB. The values are shown here, six volts for VA, two volts for VB. We have a load here, which is connected 50 ohms. And we have four resistors, R1, R2, R3 and R4 with these values. What do we want? We would like to calculate the load current that is actually shown here. It's orientation from the top to the bottom, going vertically down. The current delivered by the op amp, which is op amp one, which is this current, OP1, and also the current delivered by the op amp two, which is the OP2, which is this one. And op amps are all ideal, so we don't discuss any non ideal effects of this op amps here. So how do we tackle this? Let's look at the solutions. We see and we recognize there are negative feedback configurations here. So we can see for op amp one here and for op amp two here. So we can say due to negative feedback, we have the V plus and the V minus of this first op amp are equal to each other. That is the job actually done by the op amp using negative feedback. I also designated V one plus and V one minus because we talk now about the op amp one. So we can say V1 plus and V1 minus are equal to each other. In a similar case, I can say that for the second op amp, V2 plus is equal to V2 minus, and that is also equal to, equal to each other due to negative feedback. Another observation we need to make before we move on is that they are ideal op amps. So we have input in, impedance of which is infinite. So we can consider this as an open circuit. That means the currents entering the op amp one is zero. So we can say I one minus and also I one plus is zero. That's also the same for I two minus and also I two plus. So these also zero. So we can take that as our ideal condition. So let's first start with the load current, which is the IL in this direction. So how can we tackle this? I will designate first the node that will help me in the future analysis. I call this node X. I will have here node Y. I also have a node T here, which is the top node, and also the Q all the way to the bottom here, this node. So we have four nodes here. So I can now designate also the current flow in the resistor one, which is going in this direction, vertically down, plus and minus for R2 also, and also for R3. This is very helpful when you want to set up the equations later. Let's say the Kirchhoff's current law or the voltage law. Okay, now I see the following here. I recognize this I2 is this current, which is the voltage across the resistor R2 divided by its resistor value, which is shown here. But I can say it is the Vx minus Vy, which is the V2. So I can also write it down in this form. So we can say Vx minus Vy over R2. But what is Vx? Let's see. This V1 minus is equal to V1 plus, and V1 minus is directly connected to Vx. That means these are all equal. But I also see this node, V1 minus, is at this node a serious combination of Va and Vb. That's shown here. That means 6 plus 2 is 8 volts actually, and at this node, which is also at this node, and also at node X. So we can say at node X, I have 8 volts. In a similar form, I can do that also for Vy. Vy is directly connected actually to this V2 minus. There is, of course, there are four here, but in ideal situation, we know that I2 minus here in the op amp 2 is zero. So the voltage drop across R4 is also zero. So we can consider this as a wire, perfectly short. That means V2 minus is also Vy. And since V2 minus is equal to V2 plus, that is due to negative feedback. We can consider this as Vb, which is two volts. So we have now 
the information for Vx and also the Vy. So that means the following. If I now add them up here, so 8 and minus 2, and also 40 for R2, I will have this 150 milliamps for R I2. Why is this step important? So why do we need this I2? Now well, let's see what we have here, because if I now set up the Kirchhoff's current law at node X, I can see I1 will enter, will produce I2, but it will also produce I1 minus. But this is gone. That is zero. So it is I1 is equal to I2. So that means this current is that current. So I1 is equal to I2. In a similar form, I can develop the Kirchhoff current law at Y. That means I2 will produce I3 and I2 minus. But I2 minus is zero because we have an ID low amp. So we have I2 is equal to I3. But what you see is recognize the following. If I collect these two equations, I see it's I1 is equal to I2 is equal to I3. That means R1, R2, and R3 are actually effectively in series because there's no current flow in this branch, also no current flow in this branch. So from top to Q, from node T all the way to node Q, we see a series combination of three resistors, R1, R2, and R3. That is a really important consideration and all of the currents are exactly equal to each other and in this case 150 milliamps. That's why this step is very important to recognize. A load voltage, which is then the voltage between this T and Q, which is also the voltage across RL, is then given by the voltage at node T minus the voltage at Q. Or you can write it in this form. You can say I1 times the summation of these three resistors R1, R2, and R3, or I2 or I3. It depends, of course, what you prefer. So VL is just using Ohm's law. I1 times the total resistance seen between these two nodes. Now, if I now add them up and also use the 0 0.15, so 150 milliamps, and also add R1, R2, and R3 here, shown here as the values, I have the, the voltage of 24 milliamps. So I know the voltage between node T and Q. Why is this important? If I know the load voltage, I can calculate the load current. That is, again, using Ohm's law. Load current is equal to load voltage divided by load resistance. 24 volts divided by 50 ohms, which is load resistance, will give me 480 milliamps. That is the answer for question A. Okay. Now let's collect this here and also this, and I'll use that for a future calculation for the current delivered by the op amp 1, which is OP1, this one. Now let's also start developing the Kirchhoff's current law there and then specifically at T because this current will leave here, op amp 1, it produces I1 and also IL. So we can see that is the equation we need. We know I1, we know IL, that's all calculated in the previous step. So we can just add them up. 0 0.15 plus 0 0.48 will give you exactly 630 milliamps or 0 0.63 amps. Okay, now going to the next one, which is then the current delivered by op amp 2, IOP2, which is this one. Again, we can set up the Kirchhoff's current law in the node Q. We can say IOP2, this one is entering this node, but I also have I3 and IL also entering. So it is, in effect, IOP2 is minus this current and minus this current also. So it's actually the opposite, exactly the opposite of IOP1. If I now also use the values of I3 and also the load here, I will get actually exact same but then opposite sign, which is the minus 60. 630 milliamps. This is of course not a coincidence, also not a surprise for us because the current here leaving here, IOP will go in this branch and in this branch, but they will come back here and go in this branch the same current. But if I designate the current in this direction from left to right, I have an opposite sign of IOP1. So we can say this conclusion is definitely true. IOP1 is equal to minus of IOP. All right, now we have our calculations done for A, B, and the C. So let's collect them and look also at the simulation results. Now, this is a circuit in the simulator I have prepared 
this is the VA, this is the VB, you can see the values, and also the two ideal op amps. Here's the current arrow for measuring the current in this branch, and there's also a current arrow here to measure the current in this branch. We have also the four resistors, R1, R2, R3, R3 and R4, and we have the load, also the current uh, meter here, that's the arrow in this branch. So we can see 630 milliamps IOP1 minus 630 milliamps IOP2 and also 480 milliamps for the load voltage, a load current. I mean, there's also the volt, load, load, uh, load voltage here, which is the measuring between this node and that node, which is 24 volt also calculated, which was not, of course, the question, but also verified here. So you can say all of the calculations are verified now in this simulation. Now we can get more information if we also uh, generate a table. So that's also done here. So we can see there's a table here for this circuit. You can also see the node numbers that will give you more information. So we can see here IL of 48 milliamps, which is this current, and also IOP1, which is 60, uh, 630 milliamps, this current here, and also the minus part IOP2 here. But there is more information. You can also see what the voltage is across R1, R2, and R3. For example, the, resist, the voltage across R1 is between node 7 and 4, which is, um, or the, I mean the current, which is this one, that's actually between node 8 actually shown here, so 8 and 4, I must say. That is 150 milliamps. It's the same for the R2, and it's also same for the R3. So we can say, this is also verified that R1, R2, and R3 have the same currents. What you also see interesting is the resistor R4, the current through it is zero. You can see it between three and six. That is due to the ideal op amp consideration. Okay, let's now also discuss this in the actual simulator in SPICE and also generate these tables and also the results. So let's now jump to the SPICE. Now, here we are at the SPI simulator. You can see the VA, VB, 6 volts and uh, 2 volts. These are the four resistors, R1, R2, R3 and R4, and also the load. You can see the current arrow here for measuring the current, and also here for measuring the current out of the op-amp one, and here's the current for arrow for measuring the current out of op-amp two. These current arrows can be inserted in the circuit using meters, and then here go to current arrow and click on it and you can just change the name if you double click on it by label. You can also put here a voltage meter which is also in the meter so you can see there's a voltmeter, there's an ammeter but you can also have a current arrow which is I think much nicer to have in the circuit. It's more compact to measure the current. Okay now let's do now the measurements here by doing analysis. DC analysis and calculate node voltages. This actually produces the values for the meters you place in your circuit. So if I click on this, you get exactly the values here, what we have discussed. So 60, 630 milliamps and minus 630 milliamps and also the 480 milliamps as calculated. What you also can do is you can get this pen here and click on any component here and get the current and also the voltage for that component. Let's say R1. You can see 3 volts and 150 milliamps. The same also here, but then of course it is two times larger, so you get more uh, voltage, 6 volts. And here also the same current and also the 15 volts here. So it will be highlighted. You can also do it here, but we already discussed this. There is no current flow through R4 and also no voltage drop, so that means this is considered to be a short. All right, now you can also generate now a table. So again, analysis, DC analysis, going to the table of DC results. Now you get a lot of information. So let me expand this and highlight here, for example, this. This is again using your pen. If I highlight this, you will get current and also the voltage here highlighted in red in this table. So RL, you can see 480 milliamps and also the associated 24 volts. What you also can do is you can also look at this specifically or this one or that one. So you can also see the R1, R2 and R3. And also for R4, it's still zero amps. So it's also again verified. This IOP1 is shown here, the second entry. And IOP2 is minus 630 milliamps, the third entry. And the first one is the load current here in this arrow.
This is a multiple op-amp circuit. We will move on with more complicated circuits to discuss the situation for op-amp circuits in great detail. See you next time in another interesting video. Take care.